Welcome to Electron Line. Now finally we get into something a little bit more challenging. We have two springs and two masses and they're all connected together like that in series. How do we find the acceleration of each of the two masses like this? Obviously you can see how by pulling on one mass that will affect the other mass as well. And of course the two springs have different spring constants so they're going to be acting differently on the two masses. How do we figure out the acceleration of these two masses? Well, it turns out we can very carefully try to determine the force acting on each of the two masses due to the springs. Now, in the case of the first mass, you can see that we have two springs acting on that mass, which means we're going to find the force that comes from the first spring here with the spring constant K1, and we're going to have to find the force acting on one due to the second spring with the spring constant K2. For the first one, it's relatively easy because we can ignore what's below here. We can simply say that the force, and let's call it F1, is equal to minus K1Y. So if Y is positive, and I guess I should call it Y1 because I'm dealing with this variable right here. If Y is positive, you're compressing the spring, which means that the force of the spring will be pushing downward. You'll have a negative force. That's why the negative is here. That makes sense. When y1 is positive, f1 will be negative. What about the force caused by this spring right here from k2? Well, let's call that f2. And notice that if y1 goes up, so if y1 is positive, it will elongate this spring, and this spring will pull downward, so it will be a negative force if this is a positive quantity. So it'll be minus k2 times y1. So that will be the force felt by m1 if y1 is positive and spring k2 is then being elongated, pulling back this way. However, it also depends upon what happens to mass 2. Now let's say that mass 2 goes up. If mass 2 goes up, that will shorten the spring, so the spring won't pull as much, which means that we now have to add to that plus k2 times y2 because as the spring is compressed by having y2 going in a positive direction that will compress the spring will cause the spring to push upward so we have a positive contribution force on f2 when y2 is positive what about the force acting on m2 now in this case there's only one spring but there's two masses that cause spring K2 to either lengthen or shorten. So we have to take into account the movement of both masses there as well. So let's call that F3. And first of all, let's look at what happens when M2 moves. When Y2 is positive, it goes up, it compresses the spring, which means that the spring will be pushing downward. So it will be minus K2 times Y2. But if y1 goes upward, that elongates the spring, which means we'll have it also pull on m2 in this direction. That means it'll be a positive plus k2 times y1. And so I think now we have the three forces, two forces acting on m1 because of the two springs, and one force acting on m2 that now allows us to find the acceleration of both of the two masses. So let's find the acceleration A1 on the first mass. Well, we're going to use F total is equal to M1 times A1. So we're looking for the acceleration on mass 1. And the total force is going to be the two forces F1 plus F2. So F1 plus F2 is equal to M1 times A1. And the two forces together is minus k1y1 and minus k2y1 and plus k2y2 is equal to m1a1 and so finally I can maybe factor out some things here so oh, this should be y1 right it's uh, yeah y1 okay so factor out of y1, putting a negative in front of that, we have a1, the acceleration, as a function of y1 and y2, is going to be equal to minus k1 plus k2, because I factor out a minus, 
times y1 plus k2 times y2 all divided by m1. And so that will give me the acceleration on mass 1, or acceleration of mass 1, I should say. Notice it's going to be minus the sum of the two k's times the displacement in the first mass plus the k constant k2 times the displacement of the second mass divided by m1, and that'll give me the acceleration a1. If I now want to find the acceleration of a2, again, I write f total is equal to m2a2, and the total is going to be f3, so we can say that f3 is going to be m2a2, and f3 is minus k2y2 plus k2y1 equals m2a2. And finally, I can say that a2 is equal to, and I can reverse these two in the order. Let's see here. No, I might as well just leave it like that. So it's minus k2y2 plus k2y1 all divided by m2. And maybe if I factor out a k2, I could write a2 is equal to, mm, let's see, k2 times, I'll write y1 first, minus y2. It's a more compact form divided by m2. And so that might be a better way to write acceleration on the second mass. But notice by keeping very careful track of how the two springs act on the two masses, what the total force will be on each of the two masses, and then using Newton's second law, F equals ma, I can find the acceleration on the two masses. And that's how it's done.